As phases 5 and 6 are set to progress, we are avidly awaiting the first act of conquest of Kang the Conqueror. Seeing him invade and ravage an entire timeline on a whim and show the Avengers exactly why he is such a menacing threat. One particular advantage that Kang has working in his favor is that he gets to choose the exact point on the timeline that he invades, choosing not only the location, but the year and the day as well, down to the second. This allows him to strike timelines when they are at their weakest, with full knowledge of how their history is developed thus far. This brings up the question, however, if Kang can choose when he invades a timeline, then why hasn't 616 already been attacked by a Kang? After all, the Avengers are at their weakest, and Earth's defense is arguably the lowest it's been in decades, which should give Kang the prime opportunity to invade, yet he has not. So, stick with us today, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, and let's see if we can't figure out exactly why Kang is waiting for so long. It's important to remember that this has nothing to do with the progression of the Council of Kangs. The simple explanation is that so far, only one Kang has evolved into a tyrant, and the rest of the Council simply has not adopted his point of view. But this again doesn't answer our problem. This storyline is taking place outside of the bounds of time, and is not progressing parallel to Earth-616's timeline, meaning that the two are not related. Once this story progresses, and more Kangs develop feuds with one another, timelines will be vulnerable from any era, including the years on Earth-616 that have already passed. For this explanation, there are two primary options. The first has to do with where, and more specifically, when Nathaniel Richards was born. He was a scientist born in the 31st century, who led a successful life of discovery and engineering, and it was in this era that he discovered the multiverse. Thanks to the explanation given by He Who Remains, we are given important context to their progression and adversity. He states that they first started by greeting each other, likely keeping their interactions mostly isolated in the distant future. And here, he states that they were fighting to quote, hold on to what was theirs. This seems to indicate that most of the invasions took place hundreds of years after the modern era of the MCU, and the Age of Heroes as we know it. It's also important to note that figures like Rama Tut, the pharaoh version of Kang that we see in the post credit scene, wasn't actually born in ancient Egypt or that era at all. He too was born in the distant future, and only assumed the role of Rama Tut after venturing to the past. While this seems to explain why modern age 616 is safe for now, we do know that Kang will eventually invade the MCU's home timeline, and that Kang Dynasty will see our reality become the target of invasion. So now, we are left to wonder exactly what significance the future holds, and why Kang chooses this specific point on the timeline to invade. Why does Kang choose this specific year in which he attacks? One possible explanation has to do with none other than Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. Throughout the course of her series, we see her learn to use her family's antique bangle, which allows her to create solid light constructs. One of the most persistent and likely theories regarding the next few years is that this bangle will be revealed to be Kang Tech, which was abandoned hundreds of years ago and discovered by Kamala's family. There's evidence by the fact that the bangle was quite literally able to send her through time and back to the partition, and this could be a part of the reason why Kang is waiting. Until now, the bangle has been left in the Khan's attic, buried in nondescript boxes. It would have been incredibly difficult to lose track of, and it's possible that Kang didn't know where to find the bangle until Miss Marvel started to become a more prominent hero and once he knew where the bangle was, could invade and take it back. This theory also applies to the Ten Rings, but given Wenmu's life of conquest and his reputation across China, it stands to reason that the rings would have been much easier to find and locate if Kang truly is looking to reunite these two artifacts. Now that Kamala is a fully formed superhero, however, Kang may begin to set his sights on her and 616. There have been rumors of Kang's inclusion into the Marvels, and his involvement may be tied back to his previous ownership of the bangle. If he is involved, then he might be scouting Kamala, and rather than invading outright in order to take it, he might be studying her life and patterns in order to find the opportunity to strike perfectly. Then, in a few years, when he finds the best chance to grab both the bangle and the rings, he will commence his invasion. Right now, we know that Kamala is at an incredibly volatile state, as her bangle is teleporting her seemingly at random changing places with Captain Marvel at, at undefined intervals of time. 
This would make Kamala particularly difficult to pin down, and if she figures out how to harness the teleportation abilities of the Bengal, then her whereabouts could be ever in flux, which is all to say that now is not the best time for Kang to invade. He has to let Kamala solve this problem in the Marvels before making herself an easy target. As for the rest of the Avengers, they will still be largely fractured, even though we have evidence to suggest that their reformation process will have begun by this point. Rumors surrounding Captain America New World Order seem to indicate that Sam will make it his mission to reassemble new Avengers against President Ross, hinting that the organization might be back on the upswing. This is also in line with the Kang Dynasty rumor that the first wave will consist of Captain America, Shuri, and Shang-Chi. And since Shuri left Wakanda in the hands of M'Baku, it makes sense that she may have joined the Avengers in their ranks officially. These Avengers, however, are still likely not up to par with Kang, and he is likely not worried about this particular roster, seeing as his variants have been able to kill variants of Thor before, as per Quantumania. So in essence, it appears as if Kang's delay is down to two factors. One is finding the opportune time to find and seize the Bengal, which entails allowing Kamala to solve the teleportation problem, and he didn't have that chance before she found the Bengal because he did not know exactly where it was. He also has to strike early enough for the Avengers to still be at their weakest, and the zone where both of these overlap will likely be at some point in the next two to three years, lining up with the release of Kang Dynasty pending any more delays or in-universe time skips. But anyway, my friends and watchers, what are your thoughts on this explanation and analysis? Do you think this is a believable reason? And do you think that this is why Kang has not invaded yet? And if so, what factors do you think will play into his decision when he finally does come for Earth-616? As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching the channel and continuing to support it. Smash that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and I will hopefully see you soon.